I am doing a solid colored Sierra pullover. So the first step for a solid version is to cut your facing measurements if you haven't already. I'm doing a nine inch zipper, so I'm gonna cut my height at seven and a half inches. Do, 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 do. And my width at 2.5. Helps if you make sure you actually cut it. All right, the next step, I'm gonna mark the middle of the front bodice neckline. So I have my front bodice here and it's still on the fold. So I'm gonna grab a pen and mark the middle of the front. I will probably come down a little further and mark it again just to really make sure I stay square. You can also see that crease fairly well. And then it says, place your facing piece right side up on the right side of the front bodice. So double checking, this is the right side of my front bodice and I'm gonna place my facing right side up. So I'm gonna center my facing on the middle of my center fold. So it should be 1.25 on either side of the fold line. And then the next step is to draw a rectangle that is 3 8 of an inch wide by 6.25 inches tall for a 9 inch zipper or 9.25 inches tall for a 12 inch zipper. I'm doing a 9 inch zipper so it's going to be 6.25 inches tall. So you want to make sure that that 3 8 of an inch is centered over the middle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a dotted line for the center. Then I'm going to center my 3 8 of an inch over that dotted line. So I'm going to do 6.25, that's right there, down one side. And then make sure it's straight. I'm going to go up the other side. Make sure that the bottom is square. Good, that's showing up. That gives me hope. So the dotted line is just my center fold line and then the straight lines are my 6.25 long by 3 8 inch wide rectangle. I'm also going to pin my facing in place just so nothing shifts on me. Now I'm going to sew down one side, across the bottom, and back up. I'm going to start and end a half inch below the neckline. It's important to do this so you can cover your zipper tape later. And the next step says to sew down the middle and then cut towards each corner. So you want to stop about an eighth of an inch, about where my line ends actually. That was smart. <laughs> and then cut towards the corners here at the bottom. So you make a little triangle shape. You really wanna get as close as you can to these bottom corners without cutting the stitches. So 
I would suggest really small scissors for that part. I'm gonna do my rotary cutter for the rest of it. So there we go. And I'll turn it around so I can get in here to the rest of it. So I'm cutting through both the facing and the main fabric. It's important to be precise here. And the next step says, fold the outside edge of the facing to the wrong side of the bodice. So I'm just gonna tuck all this in. And if you want me to turn it over, so this is the wrong side of my bodice. You can't press fleece, it will melt. So that's why I say to finger press here. So down here at the corner, you really wanna try and get rid of any um, folds in the fabric or anything like that. I am also gonna just go ahead and tape this down. I mean, why not? I have a big thing of wonder tape here. So I'm gonna tape the back side of the fleece seam here on the side. Same on this side. This is Wonder Tape that I, it's an off brand that I got off of Amazon. You can find it in the five out of four Amazon storefront. It's cheap and it works just as well. So you really wanna try and make sure that your facing is hidden from the outside, which is why pressing would be great here, but that's why I'm taping it to really hold it out of the way. So once I have that seam taped down, now I can put another piece on top of the facing. And tape it down as well. You can use pens if you don't have Wonder Tape. Um, that's totally fine. Just use a lot of them. Make sure you're not pulling this down as you're taping it because you don't want to get any wrinkles in there. So that side looks really nice. I'm going to continue on with this side. If you wanna add some here at the bottom as well, it's not entirely necessary, but it can help. Okay. So here's what it looks like from the inside. And then from the outside, look at that. It's so pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty. So at this point, you're gonna place the front and back right sides together and show, sew them together at the shoulders with a stretch stitch or a serger. Then you'll turn it right side out. 
here's my bodice from the right side. I'm going to mark the center back of my neckline. And I just fold the two shoulder pieces to match to find the center back. And I'm going to mark it with a pen. For the collar, it's the long edge. Let's make sure you can see this. It's the long edge that attaches to the neckline. So you really need to make sure that you keep that in mind. I'm going to find the center back of the long edge and match it right sides together with my bodice and pin. So when I go to attach my collar to the front, I'm going to want to peel my facing out of the way. This is where I think people get confused. So I've peeled my facing on the wrong side and I'm just going to pin it out of the way. Just like that. Now the reason we do that is so that it doesn't get sewn into this collar neckline and it can actually fold over the edges of your zipper. So it's really important to go ahead and fold it out of the way. So I have it pinned at, my collar pinned at center back and I'm bringing it around to the front and I'm going to overhang it 3 8 of an inch. And I'm going to pin it in place. And then on the other side, same thing. I'm going to pull my facing down. That's why we didn't start sewing until a half inch down. And I'm going to pin my facing so it stays out of the way. And then I'm going to bring my neckline, or my collar I mean, around the neckline so that it has a 3 8 of an inch overhang on the front. I just want to make sure I'm not doing too much here. Yep. Then I'm going to find center points on both sides of my collar and neckline just by matching the pins together. And I found it on my collar. And then for the neckline, it's right in front of the um, shoulder seam. So it's important to remember it's not always right at the shoulder seam. And I'm going to match them together and pin. And then I'm going to check to see if I'd feel more comfortable pinning again. Here you can see where the collar is straight and the neckline is curved. So that's a place where it might slip. And I will just find a midpoint, kind of eyeball it, and pin it together. I should pin it from the outside though so I don't run over my needle. Same with back here. I'm going to pin in one extra spot. I call this pinning strategically and it's just to make sure that as I'm sewing it, I don't have anything move or accidentally not get sewn together. That's always kind of a pain. I like to take my time in the beginning so that I don't have to seam rip as much at the end. That's sort of my goal. It doesn't always work out. Okay, so here's my bodice with my collar pinned on and I'm going to go sew it with my serger or a stretch stitch. You can use either one. I've attached my collar and I still keep kept my facing out of the way. The next step says to stand the collar up and place the second, the inner collar piece right sides together on top of the collar that you just attached. So I'm going to find the center back of the short end this time. And then the center back of the collar I just sewed on. I'm going to make sure I keep them right sides together. Match my pins. and then match the center front edges as well.
Then I'll just pin strategically a couple places to make sure that this stays lined up and doesn't shift while I'm sewing it. I like to sew this line, this top of the collar right here. I like to sew it with a sewing machine and I really want to make sure that I backstitch right here at the front so that as it's wrapped over my zipper, I don't see any threads. So I'm going to go use my sewing machine and I'll be right back. I've attached my inner collar piece to the top of my outer collar. And now what you're gonna do is here on the front, I'm gonna unpin it where I pinned my facing out of the way. And now I'm gonna put it back. So as part of that, I'm gonna tape this front portion right here. So up here, as I get ready to tape, I'm going to open this seam allowance. And again, you can't press fleece, so I'm just going to finger press it. And the reason I do that is just so it's a little less bulky as I'm applying my zipper. I'm doing this in two pieces because I don't necessarily want the inside of my collar to be, sorry, I can't tape and talk at the same time. <laughs> but I don't wanna untape or uncover that tape and make it sticky at the same time as the front. So this seam right, the neckline seam, I want it facing up towards the collar. So I'm gonna push my seam allowance up and then I'm gonna tape That's just for my lid ledge there. Now I'm gonna tape the seam allowance of my collar to the inside. So you can see that right there. Now I'm gonna cover it back up with my facing. So there's an order and there is a reason for all of this. The reason is, if you've been with 5 out of 4 for a while, you know that I like the inside of my garments to look as nice as the outside. That's important to me. It's a sense of pride. So I'm putting some tape on here to keep the facing in place. All right. So now I'll show you on this side again, since I kind of <laughs> spoke over myself. So here's my facing, it's been folded out of the way. Here's my collar. I've opened up this seam between my two collar pieces. And now I'm gonna put a tape, a piece of tape on the inner collar. Taping down that seam allowance and a piece of tape on the inner collar. I mean, on the out, geez. <laughs> okay. So I have a piece of tape on the inner collar, taped down the seam allowance that I opened with my finger, and a piece of tape that's on the outer collar. This seam allowance is going up towards the collar piece I'm gonna get another small piece of tape for my seam allowance. So I'm gonna actually tape my seam allowance up towards the collar. That just helps it stay where I want it. 
And then I'll get another piece of tape for this little edge. There we go. I hate struggling with getting the tape backing off. So I have my seam allowance going up towards my collar. I'm going to fold in the edge of my neckline of my collar. Try and keep that straight. You want it to be a smooth line from your bodice to your neckline. This is where your zipper is going to be right here. So now I have my facing still folded away. I'm going to put another piece of tape along the top of my facing. There we go. And I'm just going to push it over the top of that seam. All right. So I can go ahead and take this off. And now I'm folding the seam allowance of my inside collar as well. I really think sewing the top of the collar is helpful to get a really nice fit around the zipper. I did not fold the inner collar on this side, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so my facings are all put back and I'm ready to apply my zipper. I'm now ready to apply my zipper. The first thing I'm going to do, you can use any size zipper. I don't like the three size because it's just harder to get up and down. I kind of like this sporty look. Notice mine is super long. Um, that's okay. I'm, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever use this on a jacket. I was trying to decide which colors I like and this is where I ended up. So I don't know. I thought Navy, I went back and forth a lot. This is where I am. Okay. So the first step I'm going to do is turn my zipper over and put tape here on the end. And then I'm going to fold the ends of my zipper tape kind of diagonally out of the way. Obviously I didn't need as much tape as I put on there, but whatever. The reason we do it diagonally is so that less of your, this seam here of the edge of your zipper tape is seen on the inside of your collar. So you definitely want it diagonally out of the way. Now we can turn this back around. You can see how much extra tape I used, whatever. <laughs> and we're going to put tape down the front sides of your zipper. You know, it's also one thing I should have tried a little harder to do is to get that straight. That way it doesn't get clogged up in the collar. So it's at an angle, but you still want the top edge to be as straight as you can get it. Now it's time to put my zipper on the inside of my bodice. Mine is crazy long, so I'm going to pull it down. <laughs> and I'm going to line it up with the top seam here. I want to line it up so that that seam has enough room to roll to the top. So I'm going to 
kind of obsessively check that. That looks good. I'll also reinforce the tape with some pins. It just really helps to be, to take your time. <laughs> I'm going to make sure my seam is going up towards my collar. Another pin at the top there just to hold it in place. And then as I'm going on this side, I really want to make sure that this seam at the neckline lines up. That's going to be the most important part of this. Well, the and the top of the collar. I feel like the neckline seam is slightly more important because it's going to be closer together. A lot of people aren't going to wear this with it zipped all the way up. I'm also making sure that my facing is turned toward the back so it's not noticeable from the outside. I might have gotten a little too close to the zipper here. I'll have to check that as soon as I get everything pinned. This is looking pretty good though. I'm going to pin it strategically. I want the same amount of space to the zipper on both sides or as close as possible. All right, so that's pretty good. Now what I'm gonna wanna do is look at it from the wrong side. So you can see I caught something here. It's just my facing is pushed out of the way a little bit. So I'm going to fix that. Um, one thing I'm going to do right now, and it'll involve me taking out those pins I just put in the front, so I probably should have waited on those. I'm going to put tape down both sides here. And my first turn is going to be just the facing itself, right to the edge of the zipper tape. If you're using a smaller size zipper, you'll have a little bit more room to turn it. So then my next one, I'm actually going to do one more layer of tape and tape it onto the sides. This just covers my zipper tape, which 
This is why I do the zipper this way. I'm trying to find something easier, but I keep coming back to this because I really like having my zipper tape covered on the inside of the shirt. Now I'm going to turn it back over and repin through my facing there. Hmm. This is a little bit of tape right here, so I'm not worried about that. So now's about the time I can also cut my zipper. Um, in fact, I could have cut it a little earlier. So I can see the end of the, the opening and then I'm gonna go about a half inch past that. That way I still have room to cover up the end of my zipper too. So I'm just going to do one fold up like that. Turn it from the outside so you can see. Now it's time to sew just from the neckline down, across, and back up. And so I'm going to do a half inch from the center of my zipper. So that's about a quarter of an inch from my fold here. All right, I have my zipper sewn in now. And on the inside, I caught the edge of the facing around the zipper sides. I think it looks really nice on the inside. Um, if you wanna see the whole thing. Couple threads. Um, my advice on this would be to go slow. I'll be honest, this side took me a couple of tries and I ended up doing it from the inside. Um, part of that is because you can see it's the facing itself wasn't taped in straight. I think I could have been more careful and had better luck with that. Now it's time to tape down the top of the collar. I already have my seam allowance taped in and now I'm going to tape it down to the zipper on the inside. I'll also say that in my machine right now, I have a size 14 
zipper, uh, not zipper, um, size 14 needle. And that really made a difference. So that looks nice. So now with the shorter inner collar piece, this is where if you wanted to cover it with twill tape, you can. Uh, let me get, grab a piece of twill tape. So if you want to cover your neckline seam with twill tape, what you're gonna do is line up your twill tape with the edge of your inside collar, your inner collar, and then you're gonna sew along the inside edge, not the edge that's on the raw piece, but the other edge that's on the collar. Okay, so what I've done is I've run my twill tape along the edge of my inner collar and just sewed it on with a long straight stitch. Now, when I fold over my collar and get ready for the next step, I should be able to line this up and sew around the bottom edge of the twill tape by sewing in the ditch around the neckline. If you tape it carefully, you'll be able to sew with one go and catch both of them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at each corner and sew around the bottom and up and then around the top of the neckline and back down. Okay, I've now sewn around the edge of my collar in the ditch and up and around the top. <clears throat> 